Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. Later in the program, we're going to talk about the prospect for Arctic air coming down into the U.S. So you'll want to stick around for that. But in the meantime, we've got a strong jet stream disturbance coming through Utah into the Four Corners area. And you see it here on the visible satellite imagery. In case you missed it, here it is on the infrared channel. Initially during the morning hours, not much to see, a little bit of cirrus, but right around noon, a baroclinic leaf takes hold, and that's the jet stream energy heading to the southeast. We can check that out on the jet stream level chart, 300 millibars, and that area of cloud development was located right about here. Now, if you have read my books or read about upward vertical motion, you know that the left front quadrant is where upward motion is favored, and that's where clouds and inclement weather tends to develop. Especially when you have this curved flow, most of the strong upper level lift is on the inside of that curve. So as we move forward, you can see that basically digs southward, and we carve out this closed low across New Mexico. So we're up to tomorrow afternoon. So this is right when Thanksgiving festivities are going on, a cutoff low over New Mexico. So we have one jet there and a new developing jet max south of that low. So with that low in place, we're going to be looking at kind of a wet period there in Texas as that taps the tropical moisture and brings it northeast. Taking a look at the surface chart, we have the old outgoing polar air across the eastern U.S., but plenty of warm air advection, bringing up temperatures into the 60s in Illinois, and Minneapolis up to 46, and 56 there at Columbus. And that's right behind this warm front, which is moving into the Great Lakes area. And then further south, we've got this transitional air mass there in Texas. You can see that the air here is kind of mild, and the true tropical air located in Cuba, southern Florida, and Mexico. And you can tell that that is a transitional air mass because on the western periphery, fog and drizzle due to the so-called overrunning isentropic lift out there north of this frontal surface. In Texas, in the western part of Texas, a dry air mass helping to support a small dry line. It's not your typical springtime type dry line, but you can see the contrast there from 15 degree dew points at Gaiman to 53 at Wichita Falls with marginal VFR overcast. And then we go further out to the west and there's our culprit. That's definitely bound up with that mid-level feature that we saw there on the satellite imagery. That was back in this region right here. And that jet max is linked up to that surface system. So what you're seeing here is that stacking that we were talking about last week. The surface low stacking up with height to a trough or a upper level low to the west. And that's going to be sitting over the cold air mass. A cold front, a rather mild one coming south. Temperatures only down to the 40s in the Four Corners area. But the thickness patterns do indicate we've got a small surge of cold air coming down through the central Rockies and the Great Basin region. We still have a plateau high in place across Washington, and let's go ahead and head up north and see what we got going on. A powerful Thanksgiving storm there off of southeastern Alaska, and that's going to give us one or two days of inclement weather in the southeast part of Alaska, and that'll be followed with some cold polar air through the passes coming in from the Yukon. Up in Alaska itself, not very much going on, just a little bit of snow there well north of that Gulf of Alaska system. And then in eastern Canada, minus 10 to minus 20, but still not seeing the brutal minus 20 to minus 30 at this time. Some rather mild conditions on the Canadian prairies, got that Long fetch of downslope conditions, temperatures in the 30s, and we've even got 40s around Edmonton. And we come around to the east coast. The Maritimes getting hammered by this outgoing polar system. Plenty of snow and northwesterly winds 
and we come around back into the eastern U.S. and we see just some residual polar air and we will expect those winds to come around to the south. Let's head back out west because that's the big weather maker. This is how it looked this morning about uh, daybreak and we see this chunky vorticity signature. This is showing that there probably is a little short wave embedded in this flow. If I paint over the top of that, that would be about right here. So there is a bit of channeling in the flow and a quasi-geostrophic disturbance in the left front quadrant. And if we roll that forward, intervals of six hours, that's that feature right there, the so-called positive vorticity advection out ahead of it, and that's precisely where that cloud development occurred at that same time. So we can just track that area of upward lift coming south that goes right into New Mexico. And now it starts looking a little bit more channeled. That means that things are dominated by the jet axis itself. So we're up to, let's see, this is midday tomorrow. A jet all curled up there in the southwestern U.S. And not really any potent sources of lift because most of that's been expended digging out that cutoff low. But we're still getting some lift out ahead of that. And the height falls, those are important as well. And we go into the remainder of tomorrow and into Friday. And that disturbance really digs down into the Big Bend area of Texas. And now scattered around the cutoff low, we see some shortwave advection lobes spinning around kind of like spokes there. And those are going to produce episodes of rain and showers as they move through Texas. Going into Saturday, we finally get that cutoff low lifting through Texas. So another surge of inclement weather and maybe even some cold core convection back around Fort Worth, Wichita Falls, and Lawton. And that'll lift up to the northeast. So by Sunday, the Midwest, getting a little piece of that energy. And you can see that vorticity pattern looks a little bit more chunky. So maybe some stronger upward vertical motion fields with that. And that'll continue lifting up to the northeast. You can see the remainder of the U.S. comes under some rather zonal flow. A couple of little disturbances through here, but that's not going to represent too much upward vertical motion. But up in the northwestern U.S., yeah, things are getting a little active up here. Let's run that back and take a look. Yeah, that energy comes right into Seattle on Sunday, Saturday night into Sunday. And that's probably going to dig south as well. In fact, yeah, there it goes trough taken shape over the Great Basin area going into Tuesday. And that'll be the next round of significant weather across much of the U.S. And here's how it all plays out. This chart here has the pressure in black, the 1,000 through 700 millibar thickness in red, the cloud shading in gray, the precip green, pink for freezing precip, and white for snow. So if we take this forward, you're going to see things are pretty dismal in Texas. Lots of rain all the way from San Antonio Corpus Christi up to Memphis and the Ozarks. And that rain will hang around for a while. And you can see that cutoff low out there producing some snow and mixed precip out in New Mexico for tomorrow night. So once again, you're looking at all the same products that the Weather Service would be seeing. This is a government developed system, AWIPS, and this is what they use in the forecast offices. And we're looking at some products here. You can see the precip showing rain and showers out in West Texas. And all the way into Friday, it just continues. Mixed rain and snow out around Midland, Hobbs, Roswell. That continues into Saturday. And more rain for Texas itself. Meanwhile, up in the northwestern U.S., there's that next weather system coming southeast. Then going into the remainder of the weekend, the cutoff low finally lifts to the northeast, bringing that rain into the Ozarks, the wraparound out there in Kansas, 
and we go into Sunday. I can kind of see the next system sneaking through up to the north, kind of jump there, but you're going to see that kind of conglomerate or come together around the Rockies in just a short while. Yeah, see those thickness lines? They're kind of becoming more packed. That's that frontal boundary right through here. And leaking up with this area of pressure falls in Colorado and maybe even some out there in Utah and Nevada. Then by Wednesday next week, skipping ahead a little bit, the next front on its way south, maybe a Pacific system out west, and it will be relatively dry. And that's the last frame I have right there for Tuesday night. Maybe some showers out there in the lower Mississippi River Valley and some more cold air heading south, probably not quite as severe. But the long-range models, the North American 850 millibar temperature, this is my favorite way of keeping track of polar air. You're not going to catch the super shallow Arctic air outbreaks, but those will tend to show up during the formative stages. So overall, this is a good product. Now, starting out, we see that the bulk of the polar air is locked up in Quebec and northern Canada. Going forward into Thanksgiving and on Friday, a vast area of downslope flow developing in Alberta. So quite a warm up right there and no polar air coming south. In fact, it looks like Pacific systems are battering the transition zone. And we go forward into Friday, more downslope conditions in Alberta and to Saskatchewan and Montana. And we see what looks like some Pacific air moving into British Columbia. The polar air still remaining quite a ways up north there. And then eventually we see some polar air, air development around the 28th, 29th, early next week. You can see those 850 millibar temperatures coming down in Yukon and Northwest Territories. So that could be a developing Arctic outbreak there in northern British Columbia. See that right there. Now we're seeing cold air filling the Fraser Valley and areas west of Banff National Park. And some of that could slip down into Washington about a week from now. A little over a week from now. And also some very good polar air. Well, I'm not going to say good, but certainly some intense polar air across the prairies. But it does not look like that comes very far south. And part of that is probably due to the troughing across the Rockies and out west, and that tends to keep the polar air from flowing south. So it tends to sit up there, affecting mostly Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and the remainder of it just decides to head on east. There it goes, maybe some garden variety cold air coming down around the 6th or 7th into the southeastern U.S., and then it looks like more cold air. Yeah, look at Alaska. They've really dropped off. 850 millibar temperatures down to minus 20, minus 25. So I think they are finally going into the ice box. When did that happen? Let's run that back. Yeah, a little bit of polar air around the 28th, 29th. Then that gets eroded by that strong southwesterly flow. And then another push of cold air. And that looks a little bit more permanent around the 7th or 8th. And with that deep polar air across Alaska and Yukon, that's going to open up that EPO pattern and probably, at least initially, is going to keep that air from coming south. But, you know, we are getting pretty far out into the future, 330 hours out. So that's probably a good place to stop. In short, not looking at any Arctic air surges coming into the U.S. for a while. But Washington and Idaho, Montana, they could see something in about eight or nine days. And that's all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you back here on Friday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.